Unit 1 Dear learners, you are now clear with the fundamental concepts of economics, namely scarcity, choice of consumers, producers and opportunity cost. This video clipping will make you understand the concepts clearly. Look at the shop which is located in an apartment building. Usually, shops are located at complex buildings. Here, the shop is functioning at the ground floor of an apartment, which is nearby Directorate of Distance Education of Annamalai University. The main branch of the shop is located at the busy centre of the town. The extension branch is located at these premises in order to satisfy the needs of the people here. Since the main branch is far away from the educational institution, this extension branch satisfies all types of consumers in providing food items. Students from Annamalai University, especially North Indians, prefer this shop as they get chaat items like pani puri, thagi puri, etc. The shop is efficiently designed to capture the market. In this branch, space is a scarce resource, which is efficiently managed and allocated with self-service. Fast foods are available any time. Fresh juices and milkshakes are also made available, where children can enjoy ice creams. Parents along with children can utilize the services here for recreation purpose. Door delivery is offered for functions held at university and to home during festivals through vehicles. People can park their vehicles in front of the shop, unlike at the main branch. More than 5,000 students are attending contact seminar classes in Directorate of Distance Education, Annamalai University. Variety rice and chapatis are served at lunch. Demand from people decides the nature of food. Choices are many for the consumers. Consumers can either prefer fast food items or South Indian items. Consumers can prefer either to sit or stand in order to have their food. Consumers who prefer AC can sit inside the shop. Otherwise, they can sit outside the shop, enjoying nature. The shop owner extends the shed at the evening to satisfy any other consumer preference. Employees prefer to have their lunch and evening tiffin here. The opportunity cost of preparing lunch at home is costly for them and therefore they would like to have lunch as well. One can understand the basic concept of economics from this video clipping. Choice of producers and consumers extend the shop and it is surviving in a semi-urban place. The knowledge of economics helps the producers to attain maximum profit and the consumers to attain maximum satisfaction. Krishna Vilas See the hotel Krishna Vilas and roadside eateries. In the morning, both shops are busy in providing varieties of breakfast. Those who would like to have hygienic food, they can have breakfast in the hotel. Those who do not mind the hygiene, they can have their breakfast at the pavement shop at a cheaper rate. Moreover, to have a breakfast at the hotel is time-consuming. The opportunity cost of time decides the consumers to have their breakfast either at hotel or at the shop. The office-goers also like to have breakfast at pavement shop. The roadside eateries are functioning only in the morning. 
consumers prefer to have their breakfast even at the pavement shop regardless of their employment status. Unit 2 Dear learners, you are now witnessing a marketplace where the buyers and sellers interact with each other. In economics, we define a market as one where the exchange takes place between a buyer and seller. It need not be a particular place or a region, but in common parlance, people understand that market refers to a place where different types of commodities are bought and sold. Markets are divided as fruits and vegetable markets, grocery market, oil market and durable goods market, including furnitures, textiles and jewelries. Now in the video, you are seeing a vegetable market where different kinds of vegetables are sold. It is a market functioning in a particular area on all days of the week. You can notice here how the buyers are choosing their vegetables from the heaps of different kinds of vegetables in the shop. You can also see the segregation of market into different items as vegetables, plantain leaves, coconuts, tomatoes and curry leaves. Now, we are entering into a market which functions only on Sundays in a particular locality in a town. People surrounding in and around the town and from nearby villages come to the Sunday market. It is called Sunday market because it functions only on Sundays. Here, no division of markets is noticed between vegetables, fruits, oils, groceries and other durable goods like plastic utensils and household appliances. Here, the perishable commodities like fruits and vegetables are sold at wholesale rate because the produce are brought to the market directly by the producers from the nearby villages and they usually sell their produce for a small profit margin unlike the retail sellers in a proper vegetable and fruits market which is situated in a particular place in the town. Sometimes at late evenings the goods will be sold at auction very cheaply to clear the market by the producers. These types of markets are usually functioning in the semi-urban towns and these markets are flourishing because it is convenient for the employed people and villages to visit the market on holidays. It is also more profitable for the producers to sell immediately for cash without waiting for the brokers or agents to give cash for their produce. The difference between the Sunday market and a regular market is that in this regular market the producers are not directly selling their products. Only the retail merchants are selling the produce. The profit margin for them is fixed at a higher level than in the Sunday market. But here the buyers can choose good quality vegetables according to their preference but it is usually not allowed in Sunday markets. While comparing the Sunday market and regular market, the market demand for a particular good, say vegetables, are determined by more number of buyers in Sunday market than in the regular market. This is because the market demand is determined by the number of buyers at a particular time for a particular good. In Sunday market, the market demand for a good is determined by more number of buyers than in the regular market for the same good. Another thing which we can observe from the video is that the goods in Sunday market are spread out in the pavements, while in regular market they are stored in pakka shops in a marketplace. By observing the functioning of the two markets, we can say 
that the determinants of demand in Sunday market are the cheap price of goods, variety of goods and more number of buyers purchasing lump sum amount of goods. In the regular market, the determinants of demand are the availability of quality goods on all days and the bargaining strength of the buyers because in Sunday market, the buyers cannot bargain to reduce the price whereas it is possible in a regular market. Unit 3 Dear learners, you are observing a famous textile shop in a semi-urban area called Kasturi Bai Company Private Limited. The shop is a three-storey building. In the ground floor, designer and cotton saris are sold. The first floor exhibits saris of different kinds, including a variety of silk saris. The second floor consists of ready-made items for boys, girls and children along with cosmetic items and other innerwares. The third floor is made available for ready-made items like jeans, pants, shirts, kurtas, bermudas and innerwares for men. The shop also has a sales department in the underground where dhotis, shirt pieces, cotton towels, carpets, flow mats and other tiny cotton items are sold. In this shop, we can observe the promotional activities undertaken by the shop owner which boosts up the sales in this shop. In economics, we usually say that whenever price is reduced for a good, the demand for it increases. But everywhere, the textile shops follow fixed prices for items with price tags. So each shop practices different tactics to boost up their sales. This particular shop attracts the purchasers by putting mehendi for the girls and enthusing the consumers with roller coaster, swimming pool and computer games for children. They also make the purchaser choose the coupons from a jar which entitles them to different gift items. These activities boost up the sales in this particular shop. Now, we are observing another shop named National High Fashion, where cosmetic items and ready-made items are exhibited in the first and second floor for sales. Comparing the two famous shops in the town, the crowd is more in Kasturi by Company shop where the same type of garments, toys and other items are sold. This explains the concept of consumer's equilibrium in microeconomics, which you are familiar with after studying the lesson on indifference curves. The consumer attains maximum satisfaction out of his or her expenditure where he or she is attracted by the sales promotional measures adopted by different shops. Here, national high fashion is not concentrating on promotional measures, whereas Kasturi Bai attracts the purchasers through different sales promotional tactics. So the consumer gets maximum satisfaction out of his or her expenditure. If he would have known English, he should have got training in the use of computer. Thus, with division of labour and specialisation, there is possibility of further expansion in the binding works. In the long run, if the binder gets confidence in introducing advanced technology with the help of trained manpower from his own family members and subsidised credit, there is scope for further expansion of the binding unit. The enterprising productive activity which requires basic skills for binding has been chosen by this particular person and there is slow and steady increase in the scale of operation over the last 15 years. There is still scope 
for expanding the scale of operation for the binder with the inclusion of computer and Xerox machine. Thus, it is found that due to internal economies of scale in the bulk purchase of paper and other raw material, it is possible for the binder to expand the unit profitably in future. The scale of operation of the unit may still be increased. If the binder is able to acquire external economies of scale with the addition of DTP works. Now you are viewing the printing press in Chidambaram town near Annamalai University. Due to its location, the university has rising demand for printing visiting cards, marriage invitations, official invitations, notices and banners. The production unit was initiated in 1990 with the humble attempt in screen printing. The enterprise has been named after male and female members in a family who are husband Mani and wife Bharati. They visited Sivakasi, which is popularly known for offset printing. Both of them worked hard and devoted more time for the development of this unit. After getting trained from Sivakasi, digital offset printing machine and cutting machine have been bought with subsidized credit during 1998. This unit has been expanded with the employment of 15 labourers and machineries. Thus, there is expansion in the scale of operation of the unit, from small to medium, with the increase in both labour, employment and capital investment. Printing books and magazines also have been done by the press. This press is situated in an area where there is easy access for a variety of customers. It is in the central business district of Chidambaram town. So there is easy access to the press for people from nearby villages as well as staff and students of Annamalai University. It is an interesting business which gives satisfaction to persons with creative interest. In order to accommodate the printing machines, computer and Xerox machines, the press requires at least space of 1000 to 1200 square feet. In course of time, with the ever-rising demand for invitations, notices and banners, there is scope for the development of ancillary units such as lamination works. The offset printing press follows the process of composing the matter to be printed in computer by female workers. The master printout is then xeroxed and heated by fixing it in that machine. It is then made dust free by cleaning and then it is impressed in the plate of the roller machine by setting it correctly which requires skill. For mono colour or different colours, the ink roller is appropriately set and used. The cutter machine costing rupees 75,000 to rupees 1.5 lakhs is used to cut cards of appropriate size that is needed for printing. It is an interesting business which gives satisfaction to persons with creative interest and provides or guarantees adequate returns to the investors. In recent years, with the introduction of computer, the labourers are periodically sent to Sivakasi to receive training in the computer, mono or colour printing. Efforts are taken to educate the workers who are new to this work and to train them appropriately. It is cheaper to employ girls with school education and computer knowledge and then give them the needed training after employment. The workers are provided with the type of training in which they have interest. In addition to tours for training, the labourers are allowed to go for recreational tours arranged by the unit. 
Thus, the press has further expanded itself with trained workers in different operations that are illustrated to you with machineries. Since 2000, this unit is using computer for mono and color printing. Thus, with specialization and division of labor, it is possible to employ 22 laborers with skill in computer printing in 2011. In this printing press, there are employment opportunities equally for women in addition to men in operating machineries. As the press is experiencing internal and external economies of scale, there is scope for further expansion of the unit. The internal economies of scale is in terms of bulk order for invitations and notices which requires bulk purchase of raw materials and full utilization of the machineries in the press. There are also external economies as the press also undertakes DTP works with the computers and labourers attached to the press. Unit 5 What you see in this video clipping is a printing press which is located at Annamalai Nagar. In this small unit, all types of printing works such as printing books, magazines, visiting cards, marriage invitation, notices, banners are undertaken. This building is owned by the proprietor himself. So the rent is not actually paid out by the proprietor. The rent of the building comes under implicit cost. Implicit cost, as we have learnt, is cost which are not actually incurred, that is, not actually paid out. But while calculating total cost, the estimated rent of the building will be added by the proprietor. You can notice the printing machines, Xerox machines and computers. They are capital investment made by the unit. These capital inputs come under fixed cost, that is, cost incurred on fixed factors. These fixed factors remain constant irrespective of the level of output. Say for example, in a short period of time, if they receive bulk order for printing books, banners and other works, they can alter and manage only with the variable factors such as labour and raw materials, but not the fixed factors. Using the available labourers, they can carry out the works in shift systems. Because to meet out the demand, Making immediate purchase of machines is not possible in the short period. The price they pay for raw materials, the wages given to the labourers are variable costs. According to demand, the working hours can be increased. More raw materials can be purchased. When the working hours are increased, accordingly the wages which account for variable factors are also increased.